Oh no, I hear you. I just didn't see you. Things can get loud at this sanctuary for wildlife in Cape Nettick. Even as life quieted down for the rest of us during the pandemic. COVID caused a little bit of a, a blip, um, you know, in our crystal ball of coming up with strategic plans and budgets and all these things. We did not factor in a global pandemic. Weird. <laughs> At the same time, you know, it's a lot of pivot, turn, pivot, turn. It's not that we're stopping doing what we're doing. It just looks different. No, you're going to get in there. What the staff at the Center for Wildlife is doing is what it's done for more than 30 years, care for and rehabilitate injured animals, birds, and turtles. He had come to us with an old injury in his shell and missing one of his front feet, which is pretty common with wood turtles. Unfortunately, they're semi-aquatic, so everything likes to nibble on them. You'd think with so many people staying home for the last few months that things would be a little more calm over here, but that hasn't been the case. We treat about the same amount of animals right now. That being said, the hit by car numbers were down a little bit at the beginning of COVID because everyone was home. The other part of that is the flip side that everyone's home. So they're in their yards, they're doing yard work, they're doing housework, they're cleaning out attics, they're cleaning out basements. And everyone, I mean, the animals don't stop for COVID. They're nesting and doing all those things. Um, so it's been an interesting balance. While injured animals are still being dropped off at the door, there has been a major change of pace here. Normally we'd have anywhere between 10 to 20 volunteers, interns and MCAs in house um, and they would have been trained and ready to feed and do all of those things. But we can't do that safely in our current clinic because there, there's no place to go six feet apart. <laughs> it's very small. So we've been doing sort of a skeleton crew, all hands on deck. A skeleton crew that makes up just 15 percent of the help this center typically has. On top of that, staff members were getting ready to move into a brand new facility, much more space and better equipment to help the animals. But fundraising almost came to a stop in March. Our budget is for next year is a little over $600,000. Soup to nuts to keep the whole thing running, open, electricity, heat, you know, printer, paper, phone lines, food. And we don't receive any state or federal funding. And most folks that drop animals off don't leave a donation, but there's no owner to pick up that bill. There is some good news outside of the center, which is typically filled with visitors eager to learn more about the wildlife on campus. And they've been helping out through fundraisers. They've been helping out through gifts of stock. They've been helping out through naming opportunities. And even like on our social media, we just broke 20,000 followers on Facebook. Oh, there you are. Social media has been the great connector mm -hmm. for all of us through the pandemic. Oh, cool. North Carolina. <laughs> now it's connecting people nice. all Welcome. around the world with some of the center's ambassadors like That's Bertram the Raven and a porcupine named Henry. Our executive director, Kristen, does a hang with Henry every Friday afternoon and people are like, oh my gosh, I've been looking forward to this all week. And sometimes it's literally just like 10 minutes of us videoing Henry crunching on a carrot. Which admittedly is pretty darn cute. We've been doing morning meetings every morning at 10. Good morning. And so it's a, a virtual meeting, you know, a Facebook Live, and you're talking with, you know, an educator and the ambassador. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and people can ask real-time questions. Nice and we've had people as far away from Amsterdam, um, Israel, all kinds of places that um, check in. And it's become part of their daily routine, too. So they look forward to that sort of like, oh, I'm going to have my coffee, 10 a.m. I'm going to watch and learn something about wildlife. Which has been great outreach for the center and education for the public. She has some barring. Um, so that's why we call them barred owls. Which seems to have a lot more questions lately, having spent a lot more time at home and in nature. One of the big messages that we're really pushing is empathy right now because it's on the decline in our society. Um, whether it is because we're, you know, polarized socially, politically, all of these things, it's kind of a wild time to be alive. For instance, with snakes, you don't have to love them, snuggle them, and pick them up, but if you don't run them over with your lawnmower, that's a really good first step. And while this staff would love to be back to full speed working from their new facility, 
I know. And introducing their inquisitive visitors to their furry, feathered, and sometimes slimy friends. That just can't happen safely right now. Come on. Instead, they're finding the good in each new difficult situation. It's just to look around. I mean, these guys are all over the place. And if you stop and sit in the woods for like five minutes, which when was the last time anyone did that?